So lately I've been kind of rethinking um, some ideas about politics and economics. And I think I'm an anarchist. Yeah, for a while now I've been uh, starting to question the uh, wage system in which we like rent ourselves out to an employer. Uh, you know, these a lot, a lot of these so-called job creators like to say that like to think that oh, without them we'd all be living on the streets when in fact they're the ones who are hoarding the wealth to begin with. Uh, with which we could easily employ ourselves in producing goods and services. Um, and, you know, I think people kind of miss the point the, uh, of Marx in, on this because I think they tend to focus more on the labor theory of value aspect and the idea that the capitalist is you know, skimming profit off the backs of the, of the workers because they're, uh, because they're producing all the wealth and the capitalist is keeping a share. And that's part of it, but I think the more fundamental idea is just the sort of dehumanizing part of it, the fact that you are alienated from your own work, that you are selling or renting out your freedom to uh, the capitalists. And so I have come lately to uh, you know, support the idea of, of worker co-ops and credit unions and workplace democracy and uh, the idea that people should own the factories they work in, you know, own, their own, own uh, the businesses in which they participate. and um, you know, and have a, a voice in how those things are run and not be sort of semi-slaves. And we think that we tend to, you know, look back on slavery as something totally anachronistic and, oh my God, how could people support that? But, um, you know, the thing with slavery and the arguments against slavery was it it wasn't just about involuntary slavery and the idea that you could, um, you know, that you were coerced into, you know, being subhuman. It was also, there's also the argument about selling yourself into slavery. You know, and it is if our rights are truly inalienable, then you can't sell your freedom, nor can you rent it out to someone else. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about, a lot about that in, you know, thing in terms of George's terms about uh, how land value taxation would undermine the, uh, the monopoly of capital and allow for greater workplace democracy and worker, worker ownership of the means of production. Uh, but that's not quite anarchism. I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's socialism either, it's more like syndicalism. Socialists tend to think that everything should be collectively owned, not, not just owned by the people who work there. Um, uh, but re what really kind of um, sparked an interest in anarchism for me was the Occupy movement. And it's not so much, uh, you know, anything that anyone in the Occupy movement has said specifically, but uh, it's more of in sort of McLuhan-esque, the medium is the message sort of way. Because what I see with the Occupy movement is I'm seeing how direct democracy can actually work. How uh, you can have this non-hierarchical organization, people just coming together uh, and cooperating and working together. And so I, th you know, I think some people have some misconceptions about what anarchy is. I think most people who are watching this are probably smart enough to realize it's not all about bomb throwing and you know, rioting and stuff like that. But um, a lot of people say, well, it's no government or you know, people just do whatever they want. Um, I, I think what we have to do is differentiate between government and state. See, government, as I see, is a process. It is, uh, you know, you govern your own affairs in, in life or people can come together and cooperate and govern uh, you know, their, their collective interests. And so I, th I think that there is, there is no necessary um, contradiction between the idea of, of an anarchist government. Uh, you know, it's, it's just um, what you wouldn't have is a state, which is a coercive apparatus which uh, has authority over the people. You know, there is, it is an other which uh, is in a position to coerce others. Um, so, you know, anarchism rejects authoritarian hierarchy. And we see that not just in, uh, you know, n not, not, not just in government, but also in the workplace. And like I said, you know, there's in the, in the system of human rental, we call wage labor, that is also an authoritarian relationship, which anarchism would get rid of. Some argue religion as, as well, though I, I sympathize more with the Christian anarchist tradition of Leo Tolstoy and Dorothy Day and like that. Um, 
but you know, the, basically, anarchists believe in voluntary association and cooperative action. Uh, it's not. Yeah, a lot of right libertarianism tends to be about uh, sort of every man for himself. It tends to be very individualistic. Now, anarchism recognizes the dignity of the individual, but it's about raising together communities, and it's um, the people working together um, rather than being coerced by an authority that stands above them. So, you know, I, I guess my my sort of vision for an anarchist society would be uh, one in which cities and municipalities would be run as land co-ops. So everyone is a co-owner of the land in, in, this, in the city. We're, we're, everyone is both landlord and tenant. Um, and we and people pay their rents to a, uh, you know, into the com into a sort of common pool. You know, we, well, first of all, you know, the money would be issued collectively by the, by a, a council, by, by the council of people who, yeah, everyone, everyone is, has membership in the council. Everyone can vote if they want. Yeah, there's no, there's no vote, compulsory voting, but people can participate in, in this democracy. Um, and, um, and the, and they will issue money for public works, which uh, will then circulate through the economy and then is collected back in the form of land rents. Um, so and so so basically every city would have its own monetary authority. Um, and then as far as banking can, concern is concerned, uh, you know, credit unions uh, would would replace banks. And actually, not just credit unions, but uh, what. Uh, what Proudhon called mutual banking, which is basically like a credit union, except it doesn't charge interest. And I've talked before about how socializing land rent would actually lead to the elimination of interest anyway. So uh, there would be no interest. Basically, bank, uh, credit would become a form of mutual aid in which people help each other out with, uh, you know, by crediting others who, who, who need help in you know, in whatever projects they're trying to accomplish, and uh, you know, and, and so it works. It, it becomes a sort of means of cooperation. Um, there would be no police or military, because well, first of all, the elimination of poverty would eliminate most crime and violence. But I'm not a complete utopian about that. I realize there will still be some disturbed individuals who you know who are going to be a problem for society. But there is no reason why we need a separate class of people that we give badges and guns to and give the authority to shoot. Um, you know, people can cooperate to, together for the common defense. People are, per, are perfectly capable of, um, you know, uh, in restraining those who are being disorderly. You know, arming themselves if need be. I support the right to bear arms. You know, um, and looking out for the common defense. Um, yeah, and sort of. Beyond the local area, you know, beyond one's own mis municipality, obviously we need to coordinate action between cities, between municipalities, maintain trade routes, maintain, maintain roads, and, and such. Um, that can be you know, negotiated between localities. You know, the the councils of different cities can meet together, you know, in person or online. And in fact. You know, I'm, I don't even want to go too much into the whole, into the possibilities of the internet for coordinating action and uh, allowing for international direct democracy because, I mean, I'm not tech savvy enough to know that. And, uh, but what I do know is that anything I could say about it would probably be an underestimation of its possibilities. So, I mean, it, it's, yeah, I, I see, I've come to see how a, cooperative society like that could actually work one in which there is no um, authoritarian hierarchy and where um, uh, people work together through voluntary association uh, for the betterment of all so I want to uh, as I want to close by uh, by saying no bombs no borders no bosses Long live the resistance.